If you have your Bibles with you this morning, please turn to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, the second book of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark. Or if you prefer, you can use your handout. There should be an insert or a handout in your bulletin of the scriptures that we're going to use today. And uh, feel free to use that if, if you uh, prefer to. Uh, and when you find your place there, I'm going to ask you if you would to stand in respect and reverence of God's Word as we read it. And then uh, we're going to make our good confession. Uh, uh, after I get through reading, if you'll just repeat after me, and we'll make our good confession. And if you want to hold your, your hand out or your Bible up in the air, that would be fine in just a minute, okay? Mark chapter 4, and we'll begin reading with verse number 35. Mark chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading with verse number 35. And it says, In the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. He's talking about the Sea of Galilee here. They were on the east side and headed to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, speaking of Jesus, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose... Everybody say arose. arose. And there arose a great storm of wind. Remember when I said pay attention to the little words in the Bible. Remember that word great. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And it was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow that they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest that thou we perish? That now would that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the seas obey Him. Let's make our good confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to receive the indestructible, incorruptible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is hungry. My heart is receptive. Speak, Lord. Thy servant here. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Throughout the month of August, we have been dedicating the Sunday morning service to a particular subject called fear. And we've been preaching a series of messages entitled, The Shepherd, the Sheep, and the Big Bad Wolf. Now understand these mean something. The shepherd represents God, the sheep represents his children, and the big bad wolf represents fear. Fear. And throughout this month we have dedicated to that. Now I know, you know, when you when you stop and think about it, you might say to yourself, well, preacher, I know that there's a great many other things that that you can be preaching on. I mean, after all, fear, I mean, pastor, there's got to be more things that you can preach on than this. Well, why are you doing this? Well, to try to be as honest and give you a justifiable reason why, I'd probably have to say because of mainly three things. One, there are probably over 500 different phobias or fears that are listed. Another reason is doctors say that one out of every four people are on some kind of medicine because of anxiety or fears. And then in the Word of God, they say that the words fear not are mentioned some 365 times. There are some fears that are quite popular among people. If, if you said the fear of snakes the fear of being claustrophobia in confined spaces, the fear of spiders, the, the fear of heights, the fear of dying. That is normal. I mean, you hear these things quite a bit. But there are some unusual but 
common phobias that most people don't even consider. Let me give you just a few real quick light. Oblivio, oblivitophobia. Oblivitophobia. This is actually, believe it or not, a fear of washing or bathing. And let me say that I pray and I hope none of you have that here. <laughs> this is, of course, more popular in children, but also women. Now, more than men. It is usually caused by something they've seen like on TV maybe, or maybe experienced some kind of drama with water in it in their life. And they have a, like a fear of washing or bathing. Now, to kind of give you an example of that, how many of y'all remember a movie back in the 70s, and I know some of you didn't live in the 70s, but you probably watched a movie called Jaws. How many of you, after seeing that movie, that when you pulled back the shower curtain at home, you kind of looked twice that after seeing that movie? That put some fear into people. There's another one called electrophobia. This is a fear of chickens. Yeah, that's what I said. Most people, now listen to this. Most people, this is no lie, honest. I know you don't think I'm joking, but I'm not. I'm not. I actually looked this up. A lot of people have this, and this is their fear, is that chickens will peck on them. And they have this fear of chickens that when they see chickens, they'll actually break out in a cold sweat. Now, your pastor, when he sees a chicken, he looks at it different ways. From this eye, he sees barbecue. This eye, he sees fried, but his heart says grill. Okay? Or bait. No fear of chickens in this old boy, I'll tell you that. There's also a fear. Believe it or not, there's, there's a, something called... How many of you all ever heard this? Obsessive, obsessive cleaning disorder. How many of y'all ever heard of it? This is where somebody actually panics. It becomes extremely dogmatic or fanatical or adamant, adamant about keeping everything spotless, neat, and in order. People like this are, I'm not that bad. Uh, it, people like this are, are, are very, like, like they want to vacuum three or four times a day. Or, or when you come in, you make sure you take off your shoes. And, and, and they get down there and, and, and scrub the, the baseboards. And, and whatever, they want everything just spotless like, like everything. In fact, this is no lie. Recently, I knew a Christian couple. Been married quite a while. In fact, he was a pastor. They recently got divorced over this issue right here. A lot because of obsessive claim disorder that she had. I mean, some people are so obsessive. It, is, it seems like you can't even live with them because they're like this. There's another fear called dramophobia. And this is the fear of crossing the street. I don't know what it is about this, but, but when somebody look, they fix it across the street, they panic, they have maybe anxiety or, or fear about this. There's one that me and my family go through, usually it's called the cytophobia. And this is a fear of making decision. And every once in a while, when me, Debbie, and Ashley go out to eat, we have the cytophobia. Where do you want to eat at? I don't know. Where do you want to eat at? It doesn't make no difference. What do you got to taste for? I don't care. What do you got to taste for? I don't care. Well, I eat it. I eat it. But where do you want to eat? Well, I'm driving. Just tell me where you want to eat. <laughs> Anybody familiar with that? Amen. Amen. And then after all that, we end up going out at night and eating breakfast. So, <laughs> decided for it. The Bible is very clear and very specific about when it comes to trusting in the Lord. As you know, our theme board verse is Proverbs 3.5 where it says, Trust in the Lord and lean not towards your own understanding. You see, because when you and I get to the point to where we lean towards our own understanding, there is going to be fear in our life. The Bible also is very specific, not only about trusting in the Lord, and not only about not leaning towards our own understanding, but it also supports that by living by faith. In fact, if you look at one of your verses there at the bottom in Hebrews 11.6, it said it is impossible to what? Please God. Right? It is impossible. Or without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we must admit that the Bible puts much emphasis on fear, faith, 
trust, and not lean towards your own understanding. This morning I want to preach a message entitled, It's Going to Be a Bright, Bright, Sunshiny Day. Some of you might remember this song way back when. But it's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. And what I want to speak about this morning is the subjects of storms. The subject of storms and how they come into life. And I'm going to mention three things here this morning about storms and about how fear uh, relates to this. So, and, and, and what the Bible says or what Jesus actually says. Number one. Number one, the storms will come. If you would, look at Mark chapter 4, verse 35 again. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. It says, In the same day when the evening was come, He said unto them, Let us pass over the other side. Over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, that uh, they took Him even as He was in the ship, and there were also with Him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and waves beating to the ship so that it was now full. Now, storms will come. Several years ago, Debbie and I left church after Sunday morning services and went home. And today, I would say that that particular day, it was absolutely beautiful. It would be best described, if you can imagine this, as, a, as a, a day like flying a kite. It was breezy, it was nice, it was windy. It, it was a day for a nice day for a walk. Well, I went home, and as we got home, I changed clothes, and I decided that I would walk the kids, the dogs, I would walk the dogs, and I put them on their leashes. And Debbie all of a sudden looked at me and said, you're not really going to do that. 